of the of the going down. Yeah. Oh, you see, yeah, yep. going down. Is that about right, mate? You can sort it out. Yeah, it looks alright. Okay. Good morning, Northampton. Uh, we're just sharing uh, discussion today. We're just ordinary people. We are from all different churches. Um, different churches we come from. We're not religious in that sense, uh, but we are righteous because of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. Now, a few weeks ago, I mentioned about Richard Branson. And by the way, if you've got any questions, if you want to take any free information, if you need prayer, come to us. We don't know everything. We're all very fun, but we're out here together from different churches sharing the truth. And you can take you can take uh, <laughs> any of those things from the table uh, and ask us any questions, and we'll try and answer them for you. Just a few weeks ago, I mentioned about Richard Branson and his flight up into outer space, and he spent 17 years planning it. And uh, that's it, mate. That's it. Funny. That's it. That's fine. It's just a kind of uh, he spent 17 years planning it, and uh, the first thing, do you know what he said when he got up into that jet, uh, into outer space, and he looked at the earth, do you know what his first words were? They could have been anything, but do you know what his first words were? <laughs> no, he said, oh, uh, OMG, OMG, this is unbelievable, this is unbelievable. When Richard Branson looked at creation, that's what he said. He was, his soul was amazed at creation. So, we look at creation. Uh, in the design of the galaxy and the universe, there are a, anthropic uh, constants. One of them, the, the design of the universe, you've got to ask the question, is there a creator or is there not a creator? You know, do we just appear here one day? And the second question is, if there is a designer or creator, who is he? Who is he? So you go ask those two questions and I had to ask myself. So, in the design, in the galaxy, there are 120 plus anthropic constants. These are precisions made into the design. What we of, Amen. Precisions made into the design of the creation. One of them is uh, gravity. Look, we're using it 24-7. We don't think nothing about it. We take it for granted. But if we were to go up onto that building and jump off, we might want to fly up into the air, but we would crash down onto this concrete. It's a constant. And do you know how precise it is? If gravity changed, by naught point to the 38 decimal point, that's a very small fraction, we would no longer be here, the sun would no longer be there, there would be no life on, that, on this planet. So it's precise. Precision in the, in the design is so precise. It's like these buildings here, they did not just appear out the ground one Friday lunchtime. Behind them, there is a builder a designer and an architect. That's right, my friend. And there is made of bricks, mortar, metal, steel, wood. So they didn't just appear, and it's no different than creation. If you look at science, which I love science, if you look at science, they are now discovering that there are these precise constants in the design of the galaxy and the universe that will not change. And I could go on and mention 120 of them, but it would take too long. But gravity is one of them. Now, there is a designer, there is someone who may, if you study, go and search for yourself, his name is Jesus Christ. He was tortured and crucified on the cross as a criminal with other thieves. This is the perfect Son of God, and that's what man did to them. Imagine that! Imagine that! The Creator who made us, who gave us 
us life, gave us breath, gave us two eyes and two ears, we killed him. Imagine that. That's how wicked man's heart can be. But if you look at Jesus Christ, he's like ourselves, like you, we would say, who do they say that he is? And we can ask the same question to ourselves. Who do we say you are? What do your friends say about you? Do they get it right? Do they say bad things about you? Do they say untruths about you? Unless they get to know you, they cannot know the real person. It's the same with Jesus. They said many things about him. Now there are 145 names approximately, give or take one or two, if you check yourself, but 145 names of Jesus Christ. Not just one name, 145 names. So if you get to know him, I'll give you just a few, not all of them. He's known as the advocate, the bread of life, the comforter, the deliverer, the first and last. And yes, he's called God. I can give you the scripture in Isaiah 9, 6. He's called God. Jesus is called God. There's a surprise. He's also called Almighty, the Alpha and Omega, the seed of Abraham, Mighty God, the seed of Abraham. And Muslims know about the background of Abraham too. We have that in common. But Jesus is called the seed of Abraham. He's also called the mediator between the Father and us. Not just a mediator between a select few, a special few, but a mediator between all of us. He's also called the mercy seat. The mercy seat. Where we would obtain mercy for our lawlessness, my lawlessness, my sin, my turning my back on him, my wanting to do things my way. He's called the mercy seat. He's also called the Prince of Peace. Who wants peace in their life? Peace? How much value could you put peace on your life in this world? The peace of life. He's also called a prophet. Yes, the Muslims are correct, he's called a prophet. But he's not just a prophet. No. He's also called the Saviour, he's also called the Son of Man. How about this one for you ladies? He's called the Bridegroom. So he's called the Bridegroom. He's also called I Am. And you know what he said about Abraham, if you go in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, he said, before Abraham is, I am. What is that saying to us? He was around, he was living before Abraham was. He's also called the last Adam. The first Adam is where we get our lawlessness from and our sin. Where we're born. He's also called the propitiation. He's also called the Redeemer, and he's called the Word. He's also called the bright morning star. He's called the Lamb of God. And I've repeated it, he's called the Prince of Peace. Those are just some of his names. Some of his names. And his goal was to go to the cross. He's God in the flesh who lived just like you and me, he was a man, so, so that we could relate to him. He could relate to us, we'd understand him, but he had the full deity of Christ, uh, of God, the Father, but he lived in the flesh also, so he could understand and relate to us in the flesh. Now when Jesus went to the cross, he went there for a reason, and he also went to the cross for the Taliban. I mention that because it's current at the moment. Jesus went to the cross for the Taliban, just as he did for me, just as he did for you. He went there, and it's like, why did he go to the cross? He went there like, yes, thank you Lord, thank you very much, bless this man. Bless this man, he said, 
stop telling lies, only I'm telling the truth. Thank you. So he went to the cross, and it's like if we had a fine, a £10,000 fine, and we went to the local court, here at the magistrate's court, and we were up before the magistrates, and we had to pay that fine, and before he wrote the order out, someone came in and wrote a check out and paid that fine for you. And then you were free to go because that fine's been paid. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He paid the price for our sin, our lawlessness against God, who had created us. And it started from the first Adam. And Jesus is called the last Adam. Think about that. So think about your conscience. God says he put a conscience in you. And you say, well, why, I, you know, I'm a pretty good person, you may say to yourself. Let me ask you a couple of questions. You've heard about the moral law. You've heard about what Moses wrote down. I won't cover all of them. i just cover one of them. Ask yourself. Let your conscience be open. Have you ever told a lie? How many lies have you told? One lie? Two lies? Three or ten? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ten thousand lies? What do you call someone who lies? A liar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You call them a liar. I like that. What's this called? This is called a tree. Let's call it a tree. Call it what okay. it is. <laughs> so, let, uh, let me ask you, have you ever stolen what you oh. Have you ever stolen anything? Even if it's a pencil from school. Have you ever stolen anything or downloaded something uh, for free that you shouldn't have done on the internet or something? Whatever it is. What do you call... Uh, when I was a young boy, I used to take sweets from a sweet shop. I used to go in and help myself. What do you call someone... What do you call someone who, who takes things, thieves things? Call them a thief, yeah. This is a tree, we call it a tree. Yeah. So someone who takes things is called a thief. Let me ask you just one other. Have you ever lusted for another person? Male upon female, female upon man. Jesus takes it a little bit further. He says, if you have lusted after someone, in your heart you have committed adultery inside. That's what he says. So let me ask you. If you've been honest with those things, I'm guilty in the past if you've been honest with those things, you are a lying, thieving, adulterous sinner. And when you stand before God on that day, it says that every one of us has got the point where you can disagree, but every one of us has got the point where one day, the day we will die, every one of us, we know that by looking around the world, one of us, is, we're all going to die, oh, yeah. and we're standing before the Lord. The Bible says it is appointed one day for man to die, and the judgment. So when you stand before Him, are you going to be guilty? Are you or innocent? To the point I'm saying, if you've been you honest are. with those you're questions, right. are you going to be guilty you're or innocent? Oh, uh, when? No. And if you're guilty, then God, in His love, God, in His love. God in his righteousness must carry out justice. Just like the magistrate called in Northampton, if we've got a fine, we must pay it. That's called justice. Unless someone comes in and pays your bill, then you're free to go. And that is what Jesus did for you and me. He paid that price on the cross. His life's blood on the cross that we would go free that on that day we die when we stand before God we will be innocent because of his blood that's what he did for you so as you pass today just think about these things these are the issues of life think about these things contemplate them let your conscience be open don't let your conscience be dead let your conscience be open be honest God put that conscience in there. Deep down you know the difference between right and wrong. And if you're honest, turn to him. And there's one word in the Bible 
that I love. It's called Whosoever. And it says, Whosoever shall turn on the Lord shall be saved. That's a beautiful word because it doesn't mean what colour skin you are, doesn't mean what culture you are, doesn't mean where you live, doesn't mean how you were raised, doesn't mean if you're a Taliban. I've seen two Taliban soldiers turn to the Lord and leave the Taliban. So it doesn't mean who you are, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So my friends, I love you all, and you say, how can you love me when you don't know me? Because I know the struggles of life. I know what you're going through. I've been in this town 30 years, so I treat you like my neighbor. So that's why I'm sharing the good news of Christ. And when you turn to him, he will give you peace in your life. He will give you joy. He will give you order in your life. That's a good question. Does God accept the, the gays? God accepts all sinners. All sinners are right. I'm a sinner that's saved. So Christ says, if you turn to me, all those who are heads and laid on me, come to me and I will give you the rest. I will forgive us. I stand next to you and I say, yes, he accepts all sinners. So think about that today. Pray on him, count on him. When you've made him your foundation, if you're sincere, the instant you turn to him, you will have eternal life and he will start working in you, cleansing you, sanctifying you, and blessing you. And you'll have it'll be the best decision you ever made in your life without any question. This world has nothing to offer. This world will lie to you day in, day out, 24-7. Jesus Christ is the truth, the life. And anyone who turns to him shall have eternal life. The soul does not stop. Your soul carries on. A friend of mine died two weeks ago. I saw the body. It, it just faded away. But the soul carries on to those who believe. Thank you, body. All that body is the casting. Oh, you say, oh, say it.